Hey everybody, hey. welcome to another episode of the Geek Buddies. <laughs> hey! hey, look at this guy! Look at this I, guy I, over I'm here! Not, I cannot do it nearly as good as Shannon. I'm not even trying to attempt uh, the level of performance that he Please. gives, but yeah. uh, maybe I raise the, the the volume a little bit in my voice to make it a little more manly. Perhaps I can do that. Well, you're two different oh, yeah. actors. One's a lead, yeah. one's a character actor. There's just differences, <laughs> Kalinowski. Just differences. You, you know, said there's it. nothing wow. wrong with that. There's not me. Not me. <laughs> wow. I'll step away. Mikey knows. He cast shows. He knows for real. Uh, but anyway, yeah, uh, this is uh, um, uh, Shannon is uh, not with us again for one more week as he still is, uh, you know, dealing with uh, uh, the family responsibilities here with this tragic uh, loss that they've had. So, uh, you know, keep sending in, keep sending him your good thoughts. He has checked the comments on last week's episode. So, Please remember to do that. If you haven't sent out uh, any thoughts for him or tweeted at yeah. him at all, please send him some love. Uh, I am one of your hosts today. I am the outlaw, John Roca, joined as always by my man over there in the middle. I am Michael Vogel, a writer and producer of animated TV shows and movies. And sitting in for our friend Shannon McClung and our kind of, you know, kind of our pseudo honorary fourth geek buddy. It is Mike Kalinowski. Yeah. How I'll are you, Mike? That. Christmas? I'll take that. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. You know, the holidays are kicking off last week. You know, this, yeah. this year's kicked us in the balls, but the uh, holidays are kicking me in the in, in a good way in the nuts. This so is your we're, season. We're going it's my season. The my holidays friend. are kicking you in your jingle balls. You're doing there good. There we go. <laughs> it's all right. And, and, and Carol Singers has said it's time for the holidays, so that's all good. That's true. Let's, let's bring it there. There's the holidays there right there is. for Mike Christmas. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, I yeah, love it. I love it. It's beautiful. If we didn't have the logo right in front of you, we'd go with that. Anyway, all right. Let's uh, let's we're going to talk about for those of you who are new to the show. Thank you so much for taking the chance on us or to listen to us. You can always listen to us on the podcast feed for the Geek Buddies as well, just in case you can't listen. You can't watch us on YouTube. Always listen for those of you who are returning. Thank you so much for being a part of the Geek Buddies family and remaining a part of the Geek Buddies family. Uh, uh, the way the show works is each one of us uh, presents a geek news item. We discuss it uh, and do three of them here in the first block of the show. Take a little bit of a break and then jump into our main topic. And our main topic, how can it not be? is all the Ahsoka Tano stuff going on and certainly Dave Filoni's conversation with Ad Anthony Bresnikan and Vanity Fair and some of the comments and answers he had to some of Anthony's fantastic questions about Ahsoka Tano and the future of Ahsoka Tano and Grogu as well. What's his future uh, as well? But we're going to get into a number of things before we get into that. Uh, Mike and Mike, are we ready? Hey. Born ready. Let's do this. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Our first story we're going to talk about here is Hawkeye. You know, Disney Plus is riding high right now with Mandalorian. But those Avengers shows or the shows connected to the MCU, they are just right on the heels of the Mandalorian, ready to come onto your screens uh, and uh, enjoy. Uh, and I can't wait for Multiverse. I'm uh, oh, sorry, I can't wait for WandaVision coming, connecting up to Multiverse of Madness. We've heard so many things about that. But one of the shows, and we've also heard a lot about Falcon and Winter Soldier, but one of the shows we haven't heard too much about uh, is Hawkeye. And uh, finally, some video got released yesterday of some of the shooting they were doing in the New York subway. They were on location there in New York. And we saw Haley Stan Steinfeld in the video. So essentially confirming that she will be part of the Hawkeye series. And certainly it's been rumored for quite some time that she will be taken on the Kate Bishop character. And there have been rumors that they're going to follow the Matt Fraction storyline from some of the best, uh, for, which is some of the best Hawkeye uh, that I've ever written comic book. And shout out to Michael Vogel, who let me borrow that. And I just was, I loved it. I, to I haven't torn through an entire comic book or a, or a compile a compilation of uh, of uh, issues in quite some time and that was one i definitely had a blast doing all right gentlemen this seems pretty much confirmed Haley steinfeld will be part of the hawkeye series most likely playing kate bishop now that we've got this essential uh, confirmation not full official confirmation but essential confirmation what is your reaction to this uh, uh vogel i go to you first uh when i gave you that book it had a dust jacket and when it came back it didn't I mean, I don't think that has anything to do with the story, but okay, if you want to bring that up. Just, I'm just, just let it me be clear. Through, it went through when Shannon I, McClung's hands, and he's dealing with stuff. I don't want to bring his name into this. He's dealing with stuff, but I'm just saying I'm it saying, went through Shannon's hands. When I give you a comic book, I want to get it back the same way that I got it. <laughs> All right, let's focus on what I'm talking about. Amy <laughs> Steinfeld. Uh, me sneeze here. Gosh. I, uh, I, this is great. It's awesome. I'm excited. It's, it's not... 
surprising. It's it's one of those, it's it's news, but it's not new news. Right. Uh, we've been hearing for a while that she was the one who was going to play Kate Bishop. Uh, this is pretty much confirmation of what we've already heard. You know, yeah. it's kind of like, since we're going to be talking about her later, it's kind of like the Rosario Dawson stuff. Like when that got leaked and Disney didn't officially say, Lucasfilm right. didn't officially say, but we were all like, Okay, yeah, we got this. This makes sense. Like, right. So I think it's really great. Uh, kind of to your point, um, as excited as I am about Mandalorian right now and as much uh, fun as it's going to be to talk about where we think it's going, we really are right around the corner. We're going to hit January and we're diving into uh, the Marvel Universe coming on Disney+. Plus. And if it's anywhere as good as Mandalorian has been in the quality of story, the quality of writing, the quality yeah. of effects... We're basically getting like a whole new era of the Marvel Universe and Kate Bishop is definitely a part of it. So uh, the news itself is not surprising, but the confirmation that sh they're definitely doing this and she's definitely playing Kate Bishop makes me excited uh, because it really does seem like we're building up for some pretty awesome young Avengers in yeah. our world of the Avengers. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's a great point. The Young Avengers thing. A lot of people have been rumored about that. Kalinowski, you know, Wiccan, Hulkling, all these possibilities. They've danced. I've got a, I've got bo you know, books of New Avengers sitting right. on my shelf. I love the New <laughs> Avengers. So this idea that, ha hi and, you know, that essentially MCU had a great run, 10 to 12 years. Yeah, you could argue some of the quality films. I know you've had some reservations on some of them, but overall pretty successful 10 to 12 years. They're setting this up. Now they move into a new phase. They've got to start planning for the future. So we're going younger Haley Steinfeld now stepping in as possibly Kate Bishop. Does this excite you for a new direction that the MCU could be going in? Uh, yeah, of course. I, like, um, it, it's interesting to think because we would have had Winter Soldier by now already if it wasn't for COVID. Yep. And that was the one I was really excited. That's the one I'm really excited for. Hawkeye would be like a close second. Right. Uh, and for so long, this was the one there was that talk with, you know, Renner had some his some personal stuff happening, and yeah. I, I know McClung loves to we we dig at each other about this. Like, oh, I haven't heard anything about that, have you, pal? And I was like, well, I don't know. And then Renner tweeted out recently he was getting a haircut, and well, they're back shooting. Uh, I don't know. I, I I do like the Young Avengers, but I like the two of these guys together. Okay. Him and her are such a good dynamic. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, gosh, we've got Patriot would have to. You know, that's. I want to say it's a relative of Isaiah Bradley, which is one of the first black mm -hmm. black Captain Americas when mm -hmm. they were trying this uh, the sol soldier serum on those guys back in World War II, uh, which right. is a great story. But that's so much you've got to. But Marvel takes their time, like they did with the universe. So if it takes five six years to get to Young Avengers, I think that's what they'll do. You mm -hmm. know, we've got to introduce these other characters, but they do it so well that this is kind of like. I guess you'd say, look back, and this is like the Iron Man version of a Young Avengers, if that's what it's going to be. Yeah. I, what I'm hoping is, I'm hoping that we're going to see him more as Ronin. Because oh, I feel the movie got such a short shrift on that. Yeah. And it's such a great costume design, such a great story arc for him. Mm -hmm. I want to say that this is his redemption. Hopefully, because, you know, the, the, we talk about that that run of Faction Aja. You know, he doesn't have a family. He mm -hmm. adopts this, you know, tenement building that he buys. So yeah. he's still got that family on the farm. So how is he going to be in New York with this young girl? You Good know, point. Like, with, not with his daughter. Right. He's like, hey, Dad, we're, we, we lost you for five years. Now you're going to go off with this young girl. What, what's going on here, Dad? So uh, it's going to be interesting. He makes an excellent point, Michael. I mean, this idea of Vogel, this idea of the fact that the Matt Fraction storyline is basically him on his own in that tenement bill with Kate Bishop. I mean, that would have worked if we kept the Thanos storyline and they never came back. But now that we've got this idea. Good also, point. Also, do we... Are we messing with dimensions? Are is this a separate thing in the Hawkeye, or is this the current dimension that we're dealing with in where Kate Bishop is part of this, or is this a separate Hawkeye situation going on? What do you think? Uh, I think you know. Look, I think to to most of Marvel's movies, even when it's based on source material, it's loosely based. Like mm, Civil yeah. War in the comics started with a super team blowing up an elementary school, and that certainly is nowhere to be seen in Civil War. So I think. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> uh, so I Good think point. they're taking they're taking some of the core elements that made something work and adapting it to the cinematic universe, which, to your guys' excellent points, like has very different. Uh, given circumstances. In this world, Hawkeye does have this family. And so, you know, I could easily see them, and this is conjecture, but like, uh, he's having a hard time getting back into th the swing of things with his mm. family because of what he did as Ronan. Yeah. And he ah, finds this girl. Good you know, point. So, I mean, I think it's like, it's, it's a way of taking what worked out of the comic, what worked in the movie, and finding the place where those things go together. Uh, another point, yeah. uh, Kalinowski, to your point on the Young Avengers front. Yes, sir. What is that? 
<laughs> well, I just, and this is, again, I mean, this is me just thinking out of my ass as you were talking, because you're right, oh, like, we've accounted, we've man, accounted like, for a lot of... Always. <laughs> okay. Okay. You um, walked into that. Yeah. We, I did, I did. We've, we've accounted for where a lot of the Young Avengers characters are going to be showing up with just rumors and things that we've seen in the WandaVision trailer and things that yeah. we've heard ah. about the Captain Marvel movies, but no one's really said anything about Patriot, which, uh, which is the Young Avengers version of Captain America, who mm, is right. a black character who's ancestor was one of the original black soldiers that they had uh, experimented on with the super soldier serum yeah. but knowing that uh knowing that winter soldier and falcon is right. going to be dealing with falcon as captain america and from what i've heard kind of dealing with some of the uh issues of racism uh, and systemic racism in our country <laughs> through that story yeah. might be a good place to introduce the idea that there was uh, a, a super soldier serum uh, and that Steve Rogers wasn't the first one to be given. So, I mean, I think that there's a, it, I, it does seem to me that part of the Disney plus strategy, and I include Miss Marvel in this, even though she technically wasn't around when the young Avengers first launched does seem to be setting up some of these younger characters. And if winter soldier and Falcon, uh, introduced the idea of uh, an original Captain America and the idea of Patriot, that would not surprise yeah. me. So that could be another cool thing to look forward to. Yeah, another thing to add to this mix, and I want to get your thoughts on this, Kalinowski and Vogel, is yeah. that, you know, it's been announced that Florence Pugh is going to be part of this yeah, as right. well as Yelena Belova. So talk about, you know, we're talking about young Avengers, but we're also talking about a lot of moving pieces with younger actors <laughs> stepping into these roles and so what does that mean that she's joining the cast clearly means that she survived black widow and so what does that mean a lot of people are, are thinking that she is replacing natasha romanoff as essentially the black widow character in this new version of the mcu so is this a connective tissue moving into the into the are we seeing kate bishop essentially becoming hawkeye and renner kind of moving away becoming ronan with occasional appearances and florence Pugh stepping into this situation as black widow are they launching that through this television show. Helen, oh, I don't, you gosh, it, it's so much like if there's one movie in all of this that's happening that I would wish was going streaming, it was Black Widow. Mm. That to me seems yeah. like it, it's such a good fit. Like it, it's not an end game type scenario where you've got to see with all your friends on the big screen. It's this kind of uh, smaller spy film, family film. Mm -hmm. I really want that to drop so bad because I think you're right. I think this does tie because we know she's the widow going forward. And now that they're announcing she's in the TV show, like now we've got to get this movie released, yeah, for her to happen with this TV show. So, and they're saying, and and Johansson said she's like, no, we're doing this in the theater when it's safe. Yeah, that was yeah. her last words. But Patty Jenkins said that about One Woman, yeah, months ago. So here yep. we are. Yeah, uh, yeah, a lot of moving pieces. What yeah. about you, Mike? Uh, oh no, I think I think you're 100 right. I mean, look, I think that. The Marvel Universe has spoiled us as as a fan of the characters that we've had, as a, as a fan of Chris Evans as Captain America, Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man, uh, Jeremy Renner as Hawkeye. Uh, you know, it's almost like when you're talking about replacing them with these younger actors coming in and like filling those roles, a part of me is like, oh, no, man, but I want I want Steve back. I want I want yeah. Tony back. But then I realized <laughs> that we've gotten these guys and girls we've gotten these characters in movies for a decade which yeah. in most superhero franchises you don't get you get one or two movies a movie bombs actor leaves you recast it yep. you reboot it uh the fact that we've had these actors sort of play these characters throughout these arcs in their lives where we didn't just reboot but we know that Natasha had this journey and yeah. you know she really felt like she had a family with the Avengers and she made the ultimate sacrifice and now we're going to go back and find out what her former family was like and see those ties and see yeah. what drives Florence Pugh to want to become the next Black Widow so it really is kind of great I do think we're lining up like the next generation of superheroes mm -hmm. for Marvel and for Disney um, and it's just a cool thing because in the world of superhero franchises, this isn't the way we've ever gotten to do it before. We've never yeah. seen a passing of the torch. We've seen a, you're no longer playing it, and we're either rebooting or gonna we're gonna recast you. So I think it's really cool. It's a gr it's kind of part of Marvel's grand experiment, and we're gonna see if it works or if we're kind of like, yeah, I don't like you as much, but I kind of have a feeling right now that it's gonna work. They seem to know what they're doing. I'm kind of with you in that, but I also like Evans got his run, and Danny yeah. got his run. Like Hawkeye to me, and Renner never really got. The, the, the what he should have got like right. you know once Robert Downey Jr. kind of took the shtick of the cocky arrogant playboy that took away Hawkeye like mm -hmm. they couldn't do that anymore so they made him this black ops soldier which was like a watered down version of 
Black Widow. He never really right. kind of came into his own. Then they gave him the farm and the family, and they tried to do that. And he started with Ronan with such a good concept of, of him doing these other things. And so I mm -hmm. think this is going to be Ren Renner's chance to shine in the role and create a definitive character version of it that we may not have seen so far. Yeah. Uh, so I'm excited for that. I, I kind of think he'll be the new mentor role, which mm. kind of this, yeah. this Robert Downey Jr. with Parker type thing, but yeah. more organic, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love your, I mean, I'm, I mean, I can't stop thinking about what you presented, uh, Kalinowski, this idea that, yeah, he goes back home, but having endured all that he endured, the loss of his family, the murders that he committed or the people he killed as Ronan, how much does that weigh on you? Plus, combine all the stuff, like you said, as he did as a super soldier, and they keep referencing Bulgaria. You know, what is what is all of that? Eventually, maybe someone hits that moment of PTSD and needs to be on his own, needs to be, you know, <clears throat> some ratty apartment in some tenement building yeah. or whatever. And so it has to kind of work out his own stuff. And while he's there, he goes on this adventure with Kate Bishop against these uh, Eastern European mobsters. And in the video, we saw Lucky the Pizza Dog. So that's yeah. another that's another part of this that makes it feel very much from the Fred, Matt Fraction storyline. So, Mike, you're correct, too. They do mess around with some of these uh, original stories to make them work within the world that they're creating on screen in, in TV or film. So I don't even say TV. I don't, it's weird to say TV. I don't know. Uh, streaming. Know, I'll weird. just say streaming. Streaming yeah. and film. So that's all possible. All of that excites me because also you're right that that Hawkeye that Renner never got his chance to put a stamp on this Hawkeye character. And right. you know, he, he whereas Black Widow is getting her own movie, Hawkeye never got his own movie, never got his own right. run. And yeah. so now he's going to get a chance to do that. And maybe this is Renner's like, you know, thanks for the opportunity. Really appreciate it. I'm going to give you all I got for this. And then I'm rolling on down the road and maybe occasionally yeah. I'll show up. Uh, and that's possible too. You know, we all love it when we like, we, we, we fell in love with a character and enjoyed a storyline of a character. Then we don't see that character for months or years in a, in a, in a superhero storyline. And all of a sudden they show up again. You're like, Oh wow. So, you know, it doesn't mean he's never coming back as Hawkeye or, or Ronan. It just means that he's out there doing his thing and we'll see him maybe down the road. So yeah. that's cool. Mm -hmm. Uh, all right. What do we got next? Uh, Mike, are you up next? Yes, I am. Uh, all right, so some pretty big news uh, in the geek world as well as the LGBTQ community. Uh, star of Juno and Umbrella Academy, uh, formerly Ellen Page, uh, came out uh, yesterday as of the recording of this as tra transgender uh, and uh, let everyone know that they will now be going by Elliot Page and that they are using both the he, him, and them, they pronouns. Yes. Uh, uh, posted on uh, Elliot Page's Twitter yesterday. Hi, friends. I want to share with you that I'm trans. My pronouns are he, they, and my name is Elliot. I feel lucky to be writing this, to be here, to have arrived at this place in my life. I feel overwhelming gratitude for the incredible people who have supported me along this journey. I can't begin to express how remarkable it feels to finally love who I am enough to pursue my authentic self. Uh, it goes on from there, but I mean, that is the big news is that uh, Elliot Page, uh, who is now going to be in season three of Umbrella Academy, uh, it was big news for everybody. And I think it was really cool uh, personally, because I think that as we sort of continue uh, LGBTQ rights, trans rights, we often have stories where um, we have issues, whether that is covering JK Rowling, whether that is uh, covering uh, uh, our favorite... Cara Dune. What's her name? You guys. We were just Cara talking Dune. about it. Yeah. Uh, Carano. Carano. Yeah. Thank you. Gina Carano. Um, so oftentimes, uh, particularly in geek news, what we often are covering is the negative side of things. We're yeah. covering the somebody said something uh, upsetting about the trans community. Somebody refused to post pronouns. Somebody refused to do this. And uh, Elliot Page is such a huge star. And some, you know, uh, Elliot Page played Kitty Pride. They yeah. played Juno. Uh, you know, they're in the Umbrella Academy. And they've been such a part of the geek community that now we have someone in the geek community who is currently playing a role in a hugely successful comic book adaptation. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've all watched this process. It's someone who we've known as an actor for so long in one light, and we have now watched this transition happen, and we are now seeing them in a brand new light. And I think it's going to be really great for everybody to kind of go on that journey. I know oftentimes there's tons of questions that everybody has about, uh, is it is it she? Is it he? Is it they? I'm very confused about what pronouns to use. Mm -hmm. And I think kind of uh, geek culture going through this together with Elliot Page and Netflix and the Umbrella Academy is going to be a kind of great process. So it's really big news. It's super cool. Uh, what did you guys think about this? Uh, I was I was uh, surprised by it, but 
uh, also kind of like, okay, cool. I mean, Alan Page has been one of these people that I've enjoyed since Juno. I remember a Comic-Con morning where I think Kalinowski was with us as well. We woke up and we put on Juno on a Sunday morning, just laid in bed talking yep. about our experiences and enjoying the movie of, of, of That's all right, over it was again. Comic-Con. That's right. By the way, I do. I was going to say, I, lo I love that most of our stories about Comic-Con, me and my three straight buddies are... <laughs> So we woke up, we're all lying in bed, we popped on a movie, Kalinowski popped a Diet Coke to get things started, and uh, we got, a, got our day started. You know, it's funny, you say yeah. that, John, and it's kind of like, the news is it's kind of like, oh, okay. Like, I don't yeah. know if it's because we're in a bubble of, of, you know, California and the entertainment industry, and it's just, our friends are trans, our friends are gay. It, yeah. it doesn't phase me. It's not until I go to other parts of the country where I'm like, oh. Okay, this is a little, yeah. a little closed off, a little different here. Yeah, uh, but I've been very fortunate being in the entertainment industry for my whole life. I, I've never, it doesn't phase me when I see stuff like this. I think, mm -hmm. I, I think it's important. Uh, but I do have a question though, if, Michael. You're probably the best to answer this. What is with the pronouns with the they? I don't understand. Well, like she's a she, he, but then they add the they. What is? I don't understand that. Uh, oftentimes, particularly if you are uh, gender nonconforming or non-binary, you don't necessarily feel comfortable as a he or a she. Okay. And you would just prefer to be they. Or, uh, I mean, it could be any reason. Like, if you've grown up your entire life, for example, like, it's it sounds like in Elliot Page's case, uh, they want to be referred to as either they or him. Like, they're more okay. comfortable in the they or the him, whereas prior to this, obviously... Uh, were referred to as a she, but like yeah. you could be a trans person who lived your entire life as a female, transitioned okay. to male, and that you're more comfortable feeling that way, but you still don't necessarily feel right being a him, but you don't okay. want to be a she anymore. Mm -hmm. And they and them is uh, the, the word two. that we have in English language. In other languages, there th right. there are more sort of gender neutral terms. Yeah. We don't tend to have them. So in other like they, languages. Yeah. You're saying? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. And they, they and them in the English language can be a little bit clunky for some people. It's part of the thing that I know trips people like my parents and other people up when right. you're an older generation. You're like, I'm not quite sure. But uh, I think once you do it a little bit as someone who's, you know, talked to more trans people or I've been in writing rooms. Uh, yeah where I was running a writing room where there was somebody who was trans and it's always a little awkward at first, but you get the hang of it really quickly if you're like, oh, he's over there, she's over there, they're right there, you're good to go. So okay. it's, it's, it's interesting, but that, that kind of is, I, I'm, per, I'm, for sure like, not, uh, I'm for sure not the expert on the trans community. Um, a trans so person than, or a non-binary person would be much better at ends, but like, that's my understanding of it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah, and I, I don't. You know, people make a big deal because they're trying to make stances or they're trying to, uh, you know, uh, complain about. Oh, why do I have to learn another thing? Listen, you learn things all the time in life, and that's the way it goes. And people change. Look, teams change logo names. Teams change location. People change their names when they get married. Adjusting your ability yeah. to say a pronoun and be aware of it is not a big deal. You're Every literally day, being a lazy human being by not a, have an a, issue with it. You get a new app on your phone. You can do remote control. Yeah, you can figure out a new app yeah. easily. Yeah, you exactly. can do this pretty easily. <laughs> yeah, it's just okay. have your tits, people. It's, it's stupid noise Jesus. that people get caught up in, and it's unfortunate to see it happen Christ. because you know I, I I watched Happiest Season this morning, and to me I was like, what's the big deal? This is awesome. It's a lesbian couple. It's normal, and the way it's presented, it's normal, and whatever. And then you look at well, there's only a handful, and really a handful relative to the amount of other films that are, that are coming out films and even less than a romantic comedy, same-sex couple films. And, of course, this is the only one that's a same-sex couple film that's a romantic comedy from a major studio during Christmas. So there's yep. all these kinds of things that you kind of have to look at and go, oh, for me it's not a big deal because I've been surrounded by this and had an interest or a – a not an issue with it since uh, since I was a, a young man, but other people, of course, this yeah. is an issue. So I love it. Well, and does this mean that she's converting in any way, or she's just saying she identifies this way? Mike, can you clarify that for me? I don't know. I mean, I think okay. that's going to be uh, her personal choice as far as transitioning or not. And I think right. uh, you know we'll either know or not know because. Uh, you know, it's what, what, what's actually going on down there is less important than what's going on in here. So I right. think like it's for, for, for all that matters for us is that Elliot Page is now Elliot Page. Now, one thing that is interesting, uh, and Netflix, uh, came out and clarified this, Vanya Hargraves in Umbrella Academy in season three is yeah. still going to be a cisgender female. So right. Elliot Page, a trans actor, will still continue to play Vanya, who is a cisgender female. They're not going to do anything to change Vanya's character or anything like that, which I think mm -hmm. was, like a lot of people were wondering what was going to happen. So that was interesting.
Yeah. yeah. Uh, another Mike thing, Michael, you might be able to help me with cisgender. What does that mean? Yeah, I, I got you. I got you. I, again, I, I, you know. No, it's actually really easy. Here. So Help for the nerd tra- stories, get educated on other things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, so, no, no, absolutely. <laughs> this is what it is. It's like a bunch of buddies hanging out and talking. Sometimes so these true. questions come up. Uh, so transgender yes. is obviously, uh, as we know, and in the case of Ellie Page, someone who uh, identified as one uh, gender and yeah. says uh, 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 it was born one gender, mm-hmm. identifies as the other gender. Yes. That is transgender. Okay. So cisgender is you were born a gender that you identify as. So all three of us are oh. mm-hmm. cisgender males. So even though oh. I am gay and attracted to men and you two are heterosexual and attracted to women, right. we all were born guys and we identify as guys. Therefore, we are all cisgender. So okay. when you go through the naming process, uh, you know, you are both cisgender straight males who use the he and him pronouns. Mm-hmm. I am right. a cisgender gay male who uses the he and him pronouns. And Elliot Page is a transgender male who uses he or they pronouns. Mm. Okay. okay. No, there, the there, there, more but. you know. <laughs> now you know. <laughs> Knowing half the battle. It is half the battle. That's true. Well, I mean. Okay. The, I'm a cisgender. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. We never know that. I love my right. dead gay cisgender son. No, I'm just joking. Okay. <laughs> wow, kicking it old school. <laughs> but no, I mean, I, and this is great. I mean, yeah. and, and hopefully, more of this starts to become uh, something that is uh, encourages other people to speak their truth and speak their identity and and, and 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 be received in a positive way and have people go, yeah, cool, let's move on. Like it's no well, big deal. Eventually, down the road, you know. Something you had said, Johnny, and uh, I think is important to note, and I think this is why things like Elliot Page uh, coming out as transgender is important, is that, uh, you know, you are more comfortable, and Kalinowski, you said, the thing, you said the same thing, you guys are both more comfortable, you've been around more gay people, you've yeah. been around more trans people, and when you go to somewhere where there is I less... I shared a bed with you at Comic-Con. You've shared a bed with me at Comic-Con many a time. Um, but uh, when... <laughs> I remember when Real World 3 San Francisco came out and Pedro oh, yeah. Zamora was on oh, it yeah. and was an yeah. HIV positive male. When Pedro passed away, Bill Clinton, who was president at the time, gave this touching speech at his funeral where yeah. he said, now the entire world knows somebody who passed away from AIDS. Mm. Whereas before you might have heard about it, but you never knew it. And so right. when you have people who are sharing their stories in the public light, uh, whether it be Pedro Zamora, whether it be yeah. Elliot Page, whether it be any of these people that are stepping forward and coming out, uh, it allows people in smaller communities that might not have uh, as diverse a population to yeah. know somebody. And thus far with the trans community that we've seen represented, it's mostly people who have already transitioned. Right. But actually watching Elliot Page go through this process, it al- like I said before, it allows geek culture to you now know somebody who you have knew before and you knew now and you've seen them go through the transition. So hopefully uh, I'm not completely naive like there's going to be a lot of haters there's going to be a lot of people saying horrible things that's what the internet is for but uh it's also an opportunity for all of us to step forward and go through this process and see it in a more positive light as well and and i will say one thing and i hope i tread carefully on this when i say this for those of you who may have an issue with this and you watch x2 and you watch Iceman's family reject him for being who he is think about that when you're rejecting someone for being who they are it's, it's so funny, same kind of John, that you say that in so many of those people, they always want to say, keep keep politics out of comics. Keep po- keep sex. They all say, it's like the X-Men. It's <laughs> never been out of comics. It's the X-Men. From the beginning. Literally, <laughs> Superman was the representative of America and what we wanted to be and as he, a political force in the world. Yeah. These people that, that always go this, you look at their head, before you engage in them on Twitter, you go and check out their wall. The, their, their header is like Captain America or the X-Men. <laughs> and you're like, what? You, you don't get it, do you? you? Just don't get it. And and yeah, it's a great point. You like that's X Men. It's yeah. acceptance. It's it's yeah. And you and know, that's why that's, that's why, why comics, comics are so damn good. That's why exactly. comics are so <laughs> damn good. There it Man, is. Yeah, it's if true. you would just true. remember what you read as a kid and live that life, I know it's fiction, but if you yeah. live that life, you're a better person for it. That's all I gotta say. I point. will say uh, the. <laughs> So when I was in the closet and I was having a hard time, like I had a crush on my best For a friend. Man, I really f- pictured you in a closet. I, I don't, I don't <laughs> I, know yeah, why. Uh, I really, really like you in the closet. You're like, you know what? It's fair. I like it in here. I want to get out of this. Uh, geek, little little <laughs> bit of geek insight here. When I was when I was uh, a kid in the closet in high school and had a crush on my closet. best friend. 
the figurative closet. And right. I didn't, I was trying to explain to my other friend why I was upset, but I didn't want to say that I was gay. I gave this long winded, I was like, well, you know, I really like Rogue from the X-Men. And the thing about Rogue is she has all these feelings, but she can't actually do anything about them because if she touches someone, she's gonna like suck up all their powers. So she can't fully embrace who she is or talk about how she feels because there's, and like the number of kids growing up gay that like went to the X-Men to find all of their answers on like, like the X-Men to your guys' point, rogue story uh mm -hmm. Iceman story now like the story of the x-men and mutants like every gay kid read those mutants and they were like this is this is me this is how i feel this is mm -hmm. what i'm going through right now so yeah. yes that's why comics are awesome as kalinowski yep. says yep agreed uh yep. and speaking of kalinowski you got our next sure. one kalinowski what's our next well, geek and, and we send our best to uh elliot page and and what's coming next yeah. for them so i'll yeah. be honest for me it takes a little it takes a, a beat to go elliot instead of ellen yep right it just does that's for me, but we'll get there. We'll get there. It's the it's that counts, yeah. Boys, uh, I I just happened to pull this out of the garage. I was doing some rearranging, but we got some big news about this fella right here now. Hello, <laughs> here. Right there. that's Michael Vogel. Got me this Comic Con from a Hasbro booth. Remember that, buddy? This, for, this yeah, for Mikey Vogel. Uh, yeah. I just want I just want to be clear that like so far on this show, I have given comics, I have given toys. I am a very giving person. You <laughs> are. You very much so are. You give your with your heart as well, Michael. Oh, that's right. Uh, that's right. Yeah. So Daredevil, uh, the rights have finally reverted back to Marvel. Uh, a huge thing, and it's interesting because. Uh, not I wasn't even thinking about this about a week ago. I was like, you know what? I want to watch the I want to watch the Marvel Netflix again. So I've been burning through those, uh, and my God, how damn good those are! But it's this huge thing because now internet is a flutter with Save Daredevil. Uh, for a couple years, uh, for about a year after the show ended, there was a big campaign pushing to get it going, and and that just wasn't going to happen because the rights were going back to Marvel, and it was all that Netflix. It was real abrupt. Remember all that? It was like oh canceled, yeah. and then but there were still seasons filming, and it's like oh this gets canceled, and it was, you were just waiting on the hammer to drop on every season, uh, and it finally did because it's all back at Marvel now. I mean Fox owned Daredevil anyway, and now that went to Disney. But they have the rights for the characters, and there's this huge push online. Vincent D'Onofrio is back in it. I think uh, Charlie mm -hmm. Cox did a video of him with this cowl sitting there, and he put it on. Uh, <laughs> and, and because those shows, you know, they're hit or miss a few uh, of the seasons in there, of the different shows. I, I think Daredevil, all three of them are, are gold standard for television uh, and comic book television. But yeah. The characters, Ellen Page, or not Ellen Page, I'm sorry, uh, Karen Page is, you know, Deborah Ann Wall. Vincent D'Onofrio, Charlie Cox, they embody these characters so well. Um, and, and, and now, like we're saying, you said the, 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 this TV versus movie, it's different now. It's streaming. A lot of times when you're looked at with TV actors and movie actors as a separate thing, and you wouldn't cross over, and that's all changed in the past five, six years. And now I just think that – I don't know. What do you guys think? So, so, so there's no plans. They haven't talked about it. They, don't, they haven't said they're going to – Marvel's got – umpteen stories to tell that they've already told to us of what's going on no mention of defenders no mention of daredevil fit kingpin any of this what do yeah. you guys what are your thoughts so is, what do, where are you standing what do you think uh we got I a mean, lot I, here. first of all i'm with you on i think those three seasons of daredevil are just great yeah mm -hmm. like i know some people felt season two wasn't as strong but How it gave us pun like i that? i don't know i've, I've heard that like uh, i guess i guess you know i think some people didn't love electra i really liked electra oh, i'm well. in that camp uh, I didn't like season yeah. two as much. I um, mean, yeah, go ahead, yeah. But I, but I think all in all, those three seasons of Daredevil are great, and season three particularly yeah. is just I balls to the wall, amazing. I haven't watched that since it came out, so I cannot wait. I'm in the um, middle of Defenders right now. Oh, right on. Rumors, rumors are that Kevin Feige really likes Charlie Cox's Daredevil, mm, as okay. as he should. I think he's a great Daredevil, and I think he's that so good. I think that um, oh. uh, the rumors are that he really likes Charlie Cox. I would love to see Charlie Cox be Daredevil, and more importantly, I'd like to see Charlie Cox be Matt Murdock. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is, I think he's an amazing Daredevil. I think he's great. I think that, to Kalinowski's point, we are a ways away, if they ever even wanted to do it, from getting a Daredevil movie. I think they are so packed in with Eternals, yeah. Fantastic Four, X-Men. I don't know that we're gonna get a full Daredevil, Kingpin, yeah. Daredevil is front and center storyline, but if Kevin Feige really likes Charlie Cox, 
uh, and likes Vincent D'Onofrio's Kingpin, which he should because that is an inspired performance. Mm -hmm. I think that it would maybe not be the hardest thing in the world to weave these characters into the other stories. Yeah. So having Matt Murdock show up as a lawyer, having Matt Mur like just kind of establishing that these characters do exist in this world, and then depending on where things go, getting Daredevil to show up at some spots. So I don't know what that means for the other characters. I don't know what that means for... Uh, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, Iron Fist. I don't know if like Marvel is of the mind that if we take some, we have to take all. Right. Or if they're like, we're going to take these characters and say Daredevil really happened. Or if they're just going to say none of these happened, but Charlie Cox still gets to play Daredevil. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? I think there's yeah. a couple ways they could go. Um, but I hope they do because I think he was so perfect as Daredevil. I would love to see him continue. Yeah. And D'Onofrio really supported this campaign. Yeah. We tweeted it, was, was, all, was all about it in front and center. But Charlie Cox, uh, at a recent, uh, in a recent interview, said uh, when he was asked about uh, this possibility, he said, I don't feel that way. No, and I don't know why I don't feel that way, but I haven't been given any reason to believe that. And from a cynical point of view, it just feels like maybe I'm trying to protect myself because I'd love nothing more. Uh, than to do it again. So, you know, a lot of people and him putting on the cow, all of it is just indication. And it's certainly possible. And look, as much as they're flying out into the in the world of space, they're also focusing on the ground, you know, in the city, down in the, you know, there with with uh, certainly with uh, Hawkeye, which we just mentioned earlier and other, other things. They're trying to stay on the ground a little bit while they still go off into the galaxy. And certainly Daredevil fits in that situation. Spider-Man and Daredevil had many adventures together. So all of that could fly in. And please don't forget John Bernthal is the Punisher, for God's sakes. That yeah. first season well, of the Punisher was incredible. That so. leads me. I actually have a question for the two of you. Yeah, all right. Uh, putting, putting on my executive hat for a minute. Uh, would, you, would, would you like this or not like this? Here's the question. Mm -hmm. all right. Marvel TV shows I, on Disney+, Plus, I'm assuming, are going to follow the general level of uh, violence and maturity that the Marvel movies do. And by that I mean, right. we as adults all love these Marvel movies, but they're definitely made for a family audience. Like these are movies where you should be able to take your kids to these movies and it's action packed and it's intense and there's great emotional stories and emotional depth, but it's not uber violent. You're not gonna put your kids in something where it's uh, uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. um, if Marvel and Disney wanted to continue Daredevil and these characters in the TV format, mm. but we're going to put them on Disney Plus and not Hulu because that's where the Marvel bucket is. Yeah. So they said, we're going to continue, but we're going to tell sort of a cleaned up version of these that's less violent and intense than what we had before. Would you guys like that? Or would you prefer that we just didn't touch it and left you what you had? <sighs> you know, it's interesting because I know the big, the big push from general people I've seen is they want... Uh, Daredevil and Spider-Man. They want, you know, his his identity was outed. Matt Murdock's going to represent Peter Parker. I was like, right. I don't think that works. Okay. I think the Spider-Man is such a bright and fun and jokey thing. And we've established Charlie Cox, of his Daredevil is bleeding at home, you know, the, the, the destroyed Catholic. Um, I What I think, thinking about it, I think we'll, where, he'll, where he will pop up if he does is She-Hulk. I mm -hmm. think she's a lawyer, he's a lawyer. Yeah. That... And that is a more grounded. And think about it, Daredevil. We've never seen him during the day out in that suit running around right, ever. Right. And in the comics, he's always with Spider-Man in the suit running around during the day. We just are not going to see that unless, like you said, Michael, they take Charlie Cox and make a new Daredevil. Hmm. That's the yeah. only thing with the suit is different. I, I it's a I, tough I, thing. I think, like John, for you and I, we were looking forward yeah. to this. I think he would pop up in Moon Knight. Yeah, that, I, I was just going to mention Moon Knight that. Mm -hmm. would be great for him. I think they keep him. I think it keeps in the TV realm. I, films is too packed. You got X Men, Fantastic Four coming. Films are too packed. He's a lawyer. He's he, he's the man on the street. He's that low level. But what I loved about the show and all the Netflix stuff is, is I like the sexuality, the nudity, the, the violence. It, it just was an adult thing, and and it yeah. separated it. From I mean, the films. these are just uh, I mean, these are like having been on the executive side. Like these are the conversations that you actually have sometimes. Like like what is the trade off? Like we are not going to give audiences the Daredevil they had because if Daredevil comes into the Marvel universe, yeah. he's going to fit here not right. up here right. and is that good is that bad how do we do it and like these are oftentimes like we're all just so excited about bring it all together bring it all together but when you think about these big brands that are these family audiences uh and again i'm sure there's people out there that are like this is why i never wanted marvel 
to be at Disney because everything's going to get Disney-fied, which right. is a valid argument. But I think that, you know, the trade-off is the success that you get as well. I mean, you get all of this yeah. money poured in. Like, if Marvel and Disney hadn't teamed up, we wouldn't be talking about the 85 it, Disney but, Plus TV series that are coming either. So, it's, so it's, an interesting, it's interesting to me. But thinking about it, like, it is part of the MCU. Like, the whole first season of Daredevil was like the incident, you know, this and that, and it, the, the, the alien artifacts destroying men. Uh, that's why they explained Hell's Kitchen doesn't look like Hell's Kitchen of today. It's gentrified. It's parks and bodegas and it, coffee shops. But they said, well, property went down because of this alien invasion. But, it destroyed, so it well, they never out said... And- but that's the, the you're right. But also, they never said alien invasion. There was always right. with the, the with incident. the Netflix series. There was such a clear division in we exist in the same world, but we are not allowed to say any of these words. I mean, yeah. even when like Luke Cage is like, oh yeah, if I get mad, I look like the big green guy. And you're like, really? We can't even say Hulk. Like, like so. Like there was yeah. always a separation. And I think the benefit of if they do cast Charlie Cox, if they bring these characters in, there's no more division. Like, yeah, they right. are in the universe, which is great. I'm just pointing out that, like, maybe not everybody will like what the Punisher or Elektra or Daredevil necessarily the is within thing, the context of this universe. Yeah. I do say this. If they want to separate themselves, what they need to do is bring Cox in, and they need to give him a makeover like they did with Chris Evans. Throw a wig on him that makes his, him make – because Marvel – makes such a great deal of t- what the comic looks like and what then the movie looks like. They made Chris Evans look like Steve Rogers. Even though normally he's got brown hair, they gave him the blonde wig. Right. You make Charlie Cox look more like the red-haired film for a uh, comic version. That and yeah. you give yeah. him a suit that is not nothing like what he wore in the TV show. Yeah. You completely make him be different if you yeah. want that. And that would work. I think I think that that is how you do it. If you're going to separate them out in a certain way, it's the subconscious things that you do yeah. uh, that are there to make you separate everything that you've seen before in the other uh, series. And it doesn't mean that you can't have D'Onofrio come back. It doesn't no, mean that hell no. other actors come back and be part of this. So that D'Onofrio has been angling to be part of this. So Kingpin is a big part of the Spider-Man and uh, Daredevil yeah. stories in the comics. So how do you weave all that in? You talk about Moon Knight, uh, Kalinowski, absolutely. Yeah. That, uh, once again, a ground type of thing. So all of that is down on the ground. And, can, and if you're going to do Moon Knight... And somehow shave the edges off and still make him, you know, uh, pretty graphic and 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 edgy, uh, uh, smooth some of those edges off, but still not, well, but still keep it edgy. Then you can do that with Daredevil. I don't have a problem with it because I I agree. Well, look, hold on, let me finish. You've been talking. Yeah, about yeah. What I want, what I say is, I would love to have the Matt Matt Murdock. That's all I care about. Whether he's pulling people's hearts out of their bodies or whatever, I don't give a <laughs> shit. What I care about is. Do you get the character right? If you get the character right, I will go with you on a PG-13 story. Yeah. I don't care because nowadays PG-13 ain't what PG-13 was back in the 80s. Now PG-13, you can have some harder edge, some more uh, uh, graphic stuff shown. All of that is still within the world of PG-13. So I would not have a problem with them doing that with Daredevil. Just have Charlie Cox come back and do it so anyway yeah, yeah. no i was gonna say look like and i just want to be clear like i don't think that the marvel cinematic universe that we've had for the past 10 years is light on amazing action and is sure. light on like they've gotten very intense and they've had yeah. some awesome moments so i'm not saying that all of a sudden they're gonna get like completely uh fluffy cloud adorable <laughs> i'm just saying that like compared to what netflix did in the way that they portrayed the punisher or daredevil and some of the things that they did you would definitely pull back a bit i'm with you guys in that i think you can do Punisher and Daredevil and any of these characters within the MCU that we currently have, and Punisher's I would love tough. it. Punisher, I tough. think you could do it. I think you could still do it. Uh, but I tough. do, but I do, but I do know that I'm just saying. I know that there would be people that would be having seen the other version that they like so much, feel like it was a little bit less than. Well, and I need to throw this in. They said Deadpool three is going to be R rated. So it's not, it doesn't necessarily mean that they'll walk away from. So I think you still can do Punisher R rated, just that when he's in the Daredevil storyline, he's PG thirteen. That's and, certainly possible, where you keep it certainly in a in a certain lane, and then when he's in his own lane, he does his own thing. Because yeah. they'd be a fool to walk away from rated R Punisher, right? Rated R Deadpool. That's money. You're printing money with that. I think also we we have to look at and Feige probably of course would think about this like. You look at X Men and Fantastic Four. That is gold mine for him. Like, hey, we can finally do it right. Like, I was never big on Fox being owned by Disney. I didn't like that idea. I, I know the studio is up for sale. I don't like that they had the property. But Fantastic Four, I cannot wait for a Feige led Fantastic Four. I cannot yeah. wait for that film. Yeah. This is done right. Like, 
we've gotten the next Netflix film, Daredevil, and those guys. We've seen it done right. So what is the benefit of like? Right. You know, yeah. It's not like oh god, finally they go back to Marvel and can we do we can see what you know done right and respected. But like Netflix did that. So what is the point of getting it unless you're not gonna either continue what was given and done great or yeah. it's 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 an interesting position to be in. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, uh yeah so uh all right uh, so there you go those are the things we're looking uh, forward yeah. to and I'm sure we'll hear more as this goes along from uh, everybody involved in Daredevil and even Netflix has supported this idea of bringing them back which is really ironic look I broke up with that person but it doesn't mean you shouldn't date him so it's just an <laughs> interesting position to be in for Netflix so but yeah it'd be great to see Charlie come back I I wouldn't be surprised if they don't you know actors sometimes read between the lines of the things they say and eat, look at Cavill Cavill's put on the cow before Cavill's made allusions to him coming back as Superman, and they only brought him back for the the, the Zack Snyder thing it, minimally, if they're going to at all. And so they haven't announced any Man of Steel two or his appearance. And so you just never know. And maybe the time has passed. And look, they're veering younger, so wouldn't be surprised to see them go yeah. with a younger guy, even though Charlie Cox is not old, but no. to a younger guy to play Daredevil. We we'll see. Uh, what they end up deciding to do because Tom Holland's pretty young, so it's like, okay, where are we gonna correlate that? Right, so, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, anyway, let's take a quick break and we'll jump into our main story on Ahsoka Tano and the comments uh, in that Vanity Fair article from writer Anthony Anthony Bresnikan. We'll be right back after this. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I think that's Raiders. Is that Raiders of the Lost Ark? Is that what that was? That's dun 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 from writer Anthony Bresnikan, who had formerly been at Entertainment Weekly. I've met him a couple of times. He's come on to do Jedi Council when I was at Collider. Nice guy. Very, very knowledgeable about Star Wars. And if you haven't read this entire article, do yourself a favor and do so. Sit down, pour yourself a nice glass of whatever you enjoy drinking, lay back, relax, and read this article. It's very in-depth. Anthony asked some great questions, and we got some good behind-the-scenes knowledge about this whole idea. But, you know, Mikey, we talked about this. We've been doing our Mandalorian reviews, uh, and Ahsoka Tano is now a live action through Rosario Dawson. One of the things that was brought up is that it was a fan cast type of situation. Oh. Dawson said that she retweeted somebody who had said to her that she should play uh, Ahsoka Tano, and she retweeted and said, absolutely, yes, please, with the hashtag Ahsoka Lives, and apparently someone in publicity, in Disney publicity that she's known for a while, forward that on to the, the powers that be to Filoni, and that happened. Uh, also, uh, uh, they revealed in this conversation, uh, Favreau and Filoni uh, said that uh, the the Mandalorian takes place, that what happened to Mandalorian takes place possibly before the final scenes of Rebels. He said that's, uh, uh, Filoni said this, that's not necessarily chronological. I think the thing that people most not understand is they want to go in a linear fashion. But as I learned as a kid, nothing in Star Wars really works in a linear fashion. You do episodes four, five, and six, and then one, two, and three. So the vein of that history, when you look at the epilogue of Rebels, you don't really know how much time has passed. So it's possible that the story I'm telling in The Mandalorian actually takes place prior to that. Possible, I'm saying it's possible. We also know that in the last episode, Mikey and, and Kalinowski, that Grogu is going to that uh, that uh, uh, Jedi Temple on Typhon and yeah. is going to put up there and is going to send a beacon out of force. <laughs> going to respond. So a lot to get into. Let's start with you, Vogel, man. What did you think of this article? What did you think of the responses uh, here and everything that was involved with uh, bringing Rosario Dawson into this character into life? Uh, it's a great article. Kind of to your point, a lot of times when you read these pieces about some kind of geek news, the person doing the interview interview uh might be a great interviewer but isn't necessarily like entrenched in the geek culture so they're not asking everything that you want to ask and this was just such a great article i kind of like hitting all the things you really want to talk about so if you're a fan of mandalorian if you're a star wars fan if you're a filoni fan if you're a rosario dawson fan it is a very very in-depth article does a lot of great stuff uh i do think you know to your point about the fan casting look it's a good reminder that Twitter uh, is the great equalizer. Uh, Twitter, Twitter allows uh, you know a geek from Middle America who 
has never touched Hollywood to post something that could make its way up to the highest levels. Like you just yeah. never know. Yeah. Um, it doesn't mean that every time you fan cast somebody, someone's going to see it and it's going to happen. But this was just one of those moments where somebody did an awesome image. The actress liked the character and the image. The people making the thing liked the image mm -hmm. and it all worked out. I, uh, what's really cool is, you know, on internet, on the internet right now, there's all those memes of like, you know, how it started, how it's going. <laughs> and so, uh, I think Rosario actually posted it, but it was yeah. the fan cast picture. It said how things started next to how it's going, which is the poster of her from Mandalorian that just yeah. came out. And honestly, it looks pretty much the same. They did a really good job. <laughs> so, uh, that part's great. Um, as far as all of the conjecture, um, about, uh, you know, the timeline of what where Mandalorian fits within the ending scene of Rebels, uh, what's going to happen with Grogu, the Jedis that are possibly going to show up. Uh, as I've said a thousand times, I have my opinions. We've talked about some of them on uh, the Mandalorian reviews. I definitely have some more thoughts uh, as I've been talking to people since we recorded. Um, what I love about it is most of the things that we've guessed in looking at the Mandalorian trailer and everything else have thus far been wrong. But yeah. that's what I love about Star Wars. I mean, they do such a good job of filling in the gaps of things that we know and then filling it with something new um, that you never know. So, it, you know, like with every guess that we have, and we can talk about some of them in a minute, there's the, based on what's happened in Star Wars and the characters I know, this is what I think. Right. Uh, but also there's the chance that they're going to throw left fielder and like introduce us to a Jedi that we've never heard of before. So yeah, it's pretty totally. cool. Yeah. What did you think about uh, a Rosario Dawson uh, uh, and what she did with Ahsoka Tano Kalinowski? And then what do you think about this article and the, and the things that were revealed in here? Uh, I, I, I'm just a fan of hers in general. Like mm. I said, I've been watching Daredevil again and hers Claire Temple on that oh, show. Right. She's just so good. Uh, I, but I've always been a fan of hers, like from yeah. her early stuff. Um, so to see her like, and I, I, I would, I'd say I'm a, a Jedi that's kind of lost his way with Star Wars. Uh, I was part of the originals, you know. I grew up with them, and 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 Phantom Menace and all that. And after a Rise of uh, Revenge of the Sith, I kind of lost my way a little bit. So I did not watch Clone Wars. Uh, I watched a little bit of Rebels, John, when you and I were doing Far Far yeah. Away to kind of get yep. back into it. Force Awakens reignited my love of it, it, it hugely. And then after Rogue One, I was like, oh wow, it really took it away again. So after Rogue One, I've been gone from Star Wars. Uh, Mandalorian, though, kind of got me back going, but it's been a slow going for me. I'm like, okay, I'm going to dip my foot back in it. Uh, and like Christian and I are doing our, our review show of it over on SCN, mm -hmm. and he is now 100% back on board, and fans are loving him and his reignite, reignited love of it, where I'm still kind of like, okay, I got a lot to catch up to do now because I did not watch Clone Wars. And, and But I, what I love about it, and, and I speak, I guess, for people that are uh, just joining now, like you don't need to know all that. Right. What happened before? It's a it, it, hundred times more in, in with the world and you pick up it so much more like like Mike, I, I gave you crap about what would you say? Like this is the tweet or of the oh, owl or whatever. About Morai, like, the owl. Yeah, you're like I'm like, but like people pick up on that and this and that and and I'm just along for the ride. But now like I fell in love with Cobb Vant from episode yeah. one, uh, for, right. from season one. Like, oh my god, and I had no idea this was a character before, but I went and ordered the books that he was from. Like that is what I love about Star Wars, uh, is that you could not be a part of it for so long and it comes back to you. And uh, it, there's a little bit of stuff online now about, oh, you're not true fans if you didn't watch the Clone Wars. Like, no, if you watch one episode of The Mandalorian, you're a fan. You could say you're a fan. I don't buy, subscribe they keep to that. that gatekeeping crap. Uh, yeah, oh, anyway. my God. There was this one guy. It was like the fans he did in quotes. And like, if you you call yourselves fans, you didn't know that this was an homage to Akira Kurosawa. And I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah, oh, I, here I we go. I, I bet I could name thirty better things about Kurosawa Kurosawa than that guy could. I know. It's, it's all. Like, it's all just. It's all intellectual masturbation sometimes, and it does get frustrating when you oh, see it. God. People stroking their brain off on on Twitter, uh, and that, that's and gatekeeping in that way. It's not. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly the face I make when I read those takes too. I, like, but I love is like I love seeing so many people, uh, and we have the same kind of circles of friends that are we're yeah. so involved in Rebels, so involved with Clone Wars to see them losing their minds. Uh, I love that. I love when, because I know it's like when a character that I've fallen in love with for years finally shows up on the big screen and, and to see people have that. Uh, it's just a joyous thing. It's joyful to see. I, I hate the, the, the things like, oh, Filoni now does Star Wars better than Kathleen Kennedy and this and that. And she Forever needs to take over. I was like, no, it was just different versions of it. And to compare Last Jedi to Mandalorian. And it's like, no, it was just different filmmakers doing different things. And some people 
you resonate more with others. Well, so it's, it's like Star Michael Wars. Van, Travis it's Star Wars, for God's sake. It's, yeah. It's like Michael Bay and Travis Knight. You know, some people make a lot of money. There you, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Uh, no, I mean, look, I think you're right. Star Wars works differently than any other big it brand does. does. It's it got really there's does. so many different entryways, so many different access points, sure. so many different characters that are beloved. Like, if you're on board with the Marvel Cinematic Universe, like, chances are, like, your favorite five movies and my favorite five movies, they're in a Venn diagram. Like, they're pretty much a couple of them are definite. Right. Like, like, you know, there's like, there's a ton of characters for sure. And you might be a Guardians of the Galaxy person and I might be a Avengers person, but like, they all kind of come together and there's a similar feel. Yep. Star Wars between the animated series, the movies, the difference from the prequels to the original the trilogy to the new trilogy, the books, like the comics, everything. There's so many different entry points. And uh, what's great about Ahsoka Tano as a specific example of this is not only anytime an animated character makes that jump to live action it's exciting for everybody uh whether that be harley quinn or you know anybody yeah. else but it's but ahsoka tano is now a character that is getting real real close she's only about yeah 20 odd years away from being one of the only characters that will span all three trilogies right she's not what quite a, there yet but uh you're right you're but right. she's she's key to the prequel stories uh, she's essential in Rebels, yeah. which leads you right up. We know she lived through the original trilogy, even though she didn't play a major role in those movies. And she's now past that. And she's getting to the point where she's probably still going to be around and kicking, hopefully, uh, when Ray and Finn and Poe are running around doing their thing. So she could be a character that spans nine, uh, not, not in all nine movies, but spans that era of history uh, and I think like Filoni, I think when the wall is said and done, the thing, he's done a lot of amazing things in Star Wars. He's going to continue to do a lot of amazing things in Star Wars. But I think the creation of Ahsoka Tano might be one of the things that he is uh, going to be most beloved for. What I love, we talked a little bit about this, uh, Christian and I, it's like, I love, and I hated this when Star Wars was bought by Disney, uh, where they said, this is a Legends now, and it's not really canon, and this and that, and we're, we're doing our own thing. But now Filoni's kind of like, ah, okay, well, I don't know about that. And all that stuff that the fans for so long wanted to be a part, like Thrawn. Like, I can't wait for Dash Rendar to show up, you know, from Shadow yeah. of the Empire. Like, Dash, show Dash, get him in there. Like, the, the, that stuff that was so well, long we weren't thinking we were ever going to see again outside of the Legends thing. But it's now, you know, continuity. Well, you know, the thing that they, uh, we were talking earlier about Marvel with, uh, with Civil War or the Matt Fraction Hawkeye, where they yeah. take the best elements of a comic book story and they wrap that into their features. Like, I think when Star Wars and when Lucasfilm and Disney knew they were going to move forward and fill in the future of Star Wars and tell new stories, they kind of had to make everything legends because there's so many different uh details about han and leia's kids and yeah, the adventures guess, that yeah. luke went on and mara jade and dash like like there wasn't a lot of room to tell new stories if you were going to have to navigate around all the stuff that had already been established okay. but to your point uh i think the day that they t said none of that is canon and there was a great disturbance in the force as a oh, thousand yeah. uh you know voice <laughs> geek voices cried out mm -hmm. but like you're right what we've seen with feloni and favreau and what they're doing is be with thrawn with some of these other with some of the planets that we've been yeah. talking about that are showing yeah. up in mandalorian they're taking the best of knights of the old republic of shadows of the empire different things and they're slowly uh weaving them back in but just like marvel does with their comic book stories they're recontextualizing them so they're showing up in different ways like the Thrawn, yeah. the Thrawn in Rebels oh. doesn't do the same things that the Thrawn in the Timothy Zahn books did because he's not dealing with Luke and Han and Leia but yeah. the character and the things that people liked about him yeah. are kind of the same and so it's really nice to see them doing with their Legends material the same thing that Marvel does with their comics which could be considered the Legends of Marvel. Yeah, you're right, yeah. you're right, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Yep, I like that too. And, and like uh, Kalinowski brought up earlier, I, I think we have to create the space for all of us to kind of come to it at our own pace, discover it at our own pace. And instead of denigrating other people who maybe don't have as much knowledge as you do, follow the path of the Jedi, follow the path of Star Wars and share that knowledge, connect with people, tell them about it, you know, be offering, offer some education to those people in a receptive, positive way because people want to be on board with it. Why do you want to, this isn't an indie band. You don't want, this is a fucking full on global phenomenon. You can't just be like, oh, this is mine. You know, come I, on. Be I think Vogel and I used to, I used to get into this a lot because I think for so what? long, what? so long, people, uh, <laughs> that doesn't sound to right. be geek, yeah. like, 
15, 20 years ago is different yeah. than what it is now. You know, oh, yeah. geek culture is the thing now that it's not really, it's not looked at as like, you got to hide what you, you love and you're looking no, at we, a nerd. We have head cheerleaders and, and star quarterbacks claiming to be geeks nowadays. Yeah, you know, it, it, it's, it's so much and I yeah. think there is that hold over an older generation that kind of like, no, I loved it first, but you didn't. And you weren't there, but it's like, Mike, you and I talked about that. It's like, it's instead of being that it's like, Hey, Oh, you want to learn about it? Well, this is the, this is a great starting point. And this comic book is a great. You want to find out about it? you? You loved him from this TV show that just came out, and you're already a fan. Read this story from 20 years ago. You're going to love him even yeah. more. And, and that but, took me but, a little while to kind of transition to. It's like, oh, it, it's it's you know, it was there, but you know. Yeah. And conversely, though, there's also the and this happens a lot in Star Wars, and John and I have been guilty of this on a couple of the Mandalorian reviews, where yeah. there's a dismissal of certain aspects say midi chlorians where we're just like ugh yeah. midi chlorians that's right. not good star wars and a bunch of people pop up and they're like no 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 sir right. you might be older you might have grown up with those original trilogies but i went to the movie theater as a kid and i saw phantom menace and midi chlorians are great and let's talk about darth plagueis and let me tell you why this is cool and you're like you know what uh, kind of to your point, it works in the other direction as well. Like there are younger fans of things, whether they are kids who grew up with Miles Morales before Peter Parker or the prequels to Star Wars, who uh, have every right to be just as much of a geek as we did, just because they came in at a different point and have stories that are the more important stories to them yeah. than the old stuff that we grew up reading and watching. <laughs> is still valid. Yeah. I love, I love in, in Mandalorian. They're kind of like they call it his M count. Wait, what yeah. do you call the M that's count? That's way of like, I think there that's the way of tight roping. Yeah. <laughs> We're not going to work. It worked. It worked. Saying M count. Yeah, it, it worked. totally did. Which would, and it also sounds like a, a uh, shorthand that you would use, right? Yeah. You'd say, right. You'd say M count. Um, we do that all the time. What's your T cell count? You know, that, that happens. Uh, anyway, uh, let's move on to another part of this aspect. And that is what I mentioned earlier, the ability of Groku. There have been a lot of speculation online about what Jedi, if, any Jedi might show up, and if he actually even does put a force call out, I was looking at an article. Some of the ones, obviously, Ezra Bridger is one of the first ones. Now, obviously, Luke Skywalker, who is you know in full badass mode at this time, is a possibility. Some other suggestions have been Quinlan's boss, uh, Cal Kestis, Kyle Katarn, and of course, Mace windu so i mean what mikey i go to you first on this one do any of these sound appealing to you or do you want someone new to be the one who answers the call if grogu puts the call out force wise we talked about this a little bit on our mandalorian review uh mm. so i won't go too into detail on it but i don't think luke skywalker is showing up okay. uh a whether you want to cast Sebastian Stan because he is a dead ringer for younger Mark Hamill or you want to bring Mark Hamill in and cover him in CGI effects to make him look younger, uh, I'm not saying it's not possible to do either of those things, but just contextually within the world of Star Wars, I think that if Luke Skywalker had shown up at some point, found a, a youngling that looked like Yoda and decided to train him in the ways of the Force, that mm -hmm. might be something we would have heard about later on. And yes, Star Wars is a world of retconning, and Star Wars is a world of like, well, we didn't tell you this because, and Ahsoka's not really a Jedi because of this, mm -hmm. but I think that's one that Filoni and Favreau probably are like, we're not touching that. I think mm -hmm. that Mandalorian kind of exists on the Outer Rim. They've made such a point that the New Republic barely has a hold on the Outer Rim as it is. Yeah. And for what we know of the 30 years between Return of the Jedi and uh, and Force Awakens, like Leia was pretty busy on the uh, in the core worlds doing her thing. Uh, Han Solo's kind of spoken for, and Luke was off doing his own Jedi thing. So I would be shocked if he showed up. Yeah. Uh, Cal Kestis, and uh, you know, I, I think that would be a stretch. It's definitely a possibility, and they could decide to bring him in if they are super big fans of, uh, of the video game. Yeah. But I think he's not likely. I think Ezra Bridger is the, mm, actually let me rephrase. I thought Ezra Bridger was pretty likely <laughs> until Dave Filoni in his in his article yeah. made such a point about the timeline of Rebels because I think that you don't throw something out there like, hey, all of this might be happening before that final scene in Rebels. I'm not saying it definitely is. I'm just saying it's a possibility unless it's a strong possibility. And what that would say is 
the reason Ahsoka goes to the magistrate in chapter 13 and says, where's your master? Where's Grand Admiral Thrawn? Is because she's actually still hunting down what happened to Ezra. Mm -hmm. And she's going to, at some point in the future, show up in that scene at the end of Rebels with Sabine and say, hey, let's go find him. So as soon as I read that, I thought that was less likely. Um, you know what? I mean, maybe it's going to be a Force ghost. I know that Dave Filoni uh, speaks very highly of Qui-Gon Jinn and got Liam Neeson to reprise his role as uh, Qui-Gon in the Clone Wars animated series. Mm. Maybe we're going to get a Force ghost scene and they're just going to show up and uh, tell Mando where he needs to go next and what he needs to do. Maybe nobody shows up. Mm. Uh, you know, I mean, I think that I think that this is one where... Everybody has their theories on the Jedi that it's going to be. And much like the planets in Mandalorian, I think whatever they end up doing is going to be D, none of the above. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what the thing. I think it's fun. One of the basis of Star Wars, one of the foundations of Star Wars is speculation. So what's a great way to get tongues wagging and people's fingers going crazy on their on their computers is to go, well, if you take him to this Jedi temple and put him on top of the tent and have him put this force call out, anything, you know, he might, maybe a Jedi will respond. And remember, she said there are not that many of us left. So now people go like, oh, who's left in the timeline? What works? What doesn't work? So it's great fun, but there's a very real possibility that he never does that. And it's very real possibility that he just stays with Mando as she uh, highlighted in this previous episode where she said, he's connected to you He's hiding his powers uh, to survive, but you bring them out. And so there may just be an unusual connection between these two. That's a whole new take on the quote unquote rule of two in Star Wars. Yeah, I'm, I, I gotta be, I, I'm probably on the outside thinking about this because I hope to God we don't get Luke Skywalker. People, what I love about this show. I'm, I'm, by I, the we, way, I'm with you 100% on that. I'm not, got, I would love to see Luke. I'd love we to see finally that. got a yep. Star Wars thing without any Skywalkers. Nothing. Yeah, it's but, like, for how long have we wanted Star Wars? It's a galaxy far, far away. We don't need one family in every single damn thing that's done. Let, let's see. Like, I hated the fact that they were at Moss Eisley for a little bit. I hated that. Well, we're not like, done there, but yeah, I right. know we didn't need Tatooine. <laughs> we're not done on Tatooine. Well, get out of here. Do something else. Yeah. Give us things we haven't seen. It doesn't need to be a Skywalker. I would. I mean, I we we had to get it. I would love to see a Star Wars thing without a lightsaber. Without a yeah. lightsaber ever showing up in any type of Star Wars thing ever, yeah. because there's so much to do, and I think that they're going to realize that. Hopefully, I don't want to see. Uh, people are saying they want to see a Han Solo popping up on the Mandalorian. I'm like, God, no, 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 no. Wrong. Sorry. That's my two cents. Okay. We don't need I, it. I, I think every character can be in play that fits within the timeline because, in my mind, they're all around anyway. So it's a galaxy, it's, John. It's yeah, huge. It a I get it. But it doesn't mean they're coming to be a series regular. It's one episode. Pop it in, whatever, an adventure, be fun. I'd love yeah. to see Owen Ironwright come back as solo. I'd love to see Sebastian Stan. Oh, okay. I'd love to see a new Leia, and I'll tell you why. It's characters that endure. Actors live and die. We've seen how many Batmans, how many Spider-Mans, how many Supermans. Because that's Gotham City. Yeah, it's but you know, City. There, there was someone who said, George Reeves, nobody can touch what he did. And go, Don't give me Christopher Reeve. There's always somebody who's saying whoever they discovered first or saw first is the only one. You can never do it. I get, though, the complaint about, well, it's a bigger galaxy. Totally get it. It doesn't mean it can't pop in though for a fun, cool one-off in one episode. That would be great. I don't it, see the. I, I wouldn't hate it. So yeah. yeah. My issue. My issue is less with the recasting, uh, which I yeah, get why no people. I, I get why people feel bad about. It. I don't have a huge problem with it. Um, the issue is more that, and and this is what Dave Filoni has done really well with Clone Wars and particularly with Rebels. Um, and now he and Favreau are doing on Mandalorian, which is. They took Ahsoka Tano. They took yeah. Bo-Katan and the Mandalorians. They took Hera. Like they, with Rebels, they took Ezra and Kanan and gave us two Jedi. They gave yep. us a... In a world where we are like, in this era, there is supposed to be no Jedi. There's yep. not supposed to be any. There's just Luke on Tatooine and Obi-Wan and Yoda. And they gave us Ezra and they gave us Kanan yep. and they gave us the Inquisitors. And so they gave us Star Wars level action and Jedis and force powers and they had Ahsoka running around. And the only way that works really is if those characters very carefully and very sparingly ever touch the characters that we know. 
Mm. So in Rebels, Leia does show up on a mission uh, doing stuff for the Rebellion at one point. We do see Lando, like we, where it yeah. was appropriate to have a character pop up in a way that they would never really know the full story of what we know. And so with Ahsoka and Mando and Grogu, when you have Ahsoka, who's hugely important to Star Wars, where you have Grogu, who is a tiny Yoda with huge force powers, you got Moff Gideon, you got the Darksaber, you got all this stuff, like there's enough room, kind of to Kalinowski's point, in this galaxy for other characters to do hugely important things that uh, that are hugely important to the fate of this galaxy without these other people knowing. But as soon as those people collide and these super important characters all come together, it starts to get really hard to untangle it and make sense of things. And so I think they're wisely going to sort of just keep it as far apart. I'm not yeah. saying we're never going to see Mando fly off from some spaceport and the man as the Millennium Falcon flies in and we're all going to freak out and pause it and go crazy. I'm not saying Chewbacca's never going to show up. Mm. I'm saying I think they're going to keep it really, really sparing and not do it in any kind of major reveal kind of way, which is what this would be. Now, well, I'm saying that yeah. now, in like two weeks from now, Luke Skywalker's going to show up and be like, well, shit. But I don't think that's going to happen. No, I don't think so either. Every rumored person that they said was going to show up has shown up as the character they were rumored to be. Yeah, Boba Fett, 95%. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So we've seen that. We've seen that already. But so I don't think there's any way they're dropping a Sebastian Stan as Luke or some kind of Luke CGI. No, I think we would have no heard about that, it. Yeah, we, it would have leaked at some point at some level for sure. I did hear one rumor that I thought was really cool. Uh, I mean, just online, anybody could, this wasn't like, this isn't some com top secret somebody like called me. But online, uh, most of the things, like I don't think Mace Windu survived getting thrown out of that window. Yeah, I, don't I don't think Sam think so. Jackson is showing up. I don't think Luke is showing up. Uh, there, most of the rumors that I hear, I'm kind of like, mm, I think that would be a real stretch. The one thing that I thought was really interesting when people were kind of, uh, conjecturing how Grogu escaped the Jedi Temple, mm. um, somebody brought up the idea that it's actually a way to introduce Cad Bane into yeah. the world of the Mandalorian. And that, I think, makes a lot more sense than anything else we've seen so far. So, yeah. A, in Clone Wars animated, Cad Bane has already kidnapped a bunch of younglings in the past. Like, we've seen him do it in the show. He went and got a bunch of younglings and tried to take him to... Uh, to the Emperor. So we know that Cad Bane is a bounty hunter, has done that in the past. Uh, we know that Cad Bane is a bounty hunter who will work on whatever side of the law and do whatever's asked of him. Mm -hmm. We know he exists at that time. And we also know, because Dave Filoni showed this at one of the Star Wars festivals, and you can see it online, that Boba Fett and Cad Bane were supposed to have had more of a past in the final season seven of Clone Wars that they never got to do the full season right, of. That you right. can actually see uh, the animatic of Cad Bane and a younger Boba Fett kind of having this showdown. Uh, and Cad Bane is the reason that Boba has the little dent in his helmet uh, based on based on this animatic. So I do think that bringing Boba Fett into this world, uh, this is already a world about bounty hunters, about uh, the guild, about all these things. Finding out that Cad Bane was the one that did this, and I'm not saying I definitely think it's true, I'm saying of all the theories I've heard, this is one that really appealed to me, and yeah. uh, and I could see that working as, as a way to introduce Cad Bane into the live action universe. Yeah, I like that idea. All right. I've I've seen other ones where Darth Maul is the one that stole the and hid uh, hid and I was like, wow, could that work? I don't know. Yeah, somebody on Twitter, somebody on uh on the Geek Buddies Twitter uh, responded with that, and I was like, well, we know that when Anakin goes on his child killing spree, Darth Maul is locked up in that Mandalorian Jedi cage before Ahsoka frees him because we see that happen. So he's pretty far away. Yeah. I guess he could have flown to Coruscant, rescued Grogu, done something with him, decided you're not going to be my apprentice, <laughs> thrown him in a trash basket, and then gone off to do whatever he does until he finds Ezra Bridger. But uh, I think that that's probably less likely. Hey, look, Bruce Wayne got to Gotham pretty fast out of that, uh, out of that pit. So anything's possible, I imagine. I mean, that's fair. <laughs> All right, well, this is a good place to end this episode of Geek Buddies. Thank you all so much for downloading this on YouTube or downloading it on the podcast. We, we can't thank you enough. And a big, big thank you again to Mike Kalinowski. My pleasure, in guys. Anna McClung. It's always great to see you. Mike, uh, please tell people everything that's going on, everything they, everywhere they can find you. Uh, please feel free. And yeah, guys, uh, check me out at Twitter at Mike Kalinowski. I'm every Friday morning, 930, Christian Harloff and I on the SEN Network doing our Mandalorian spoiler review. 
Uh, that's every single Friday we've been doing that. Also, if you guys know my love of Batman versus Superman and how wonderful it is, yes. check me out, guys, on Rotten Tomatoes. I went on their show. Rotten Tomatoes is wrong. They asked me to come on there and kind of prove them wrong on their rot- rating, <laughs> rating of Rotten of Batman versus Superman, and it was a success. They turned one of the guys <laughs> who hated the film and knew they actually kind of liked it now. So Hit check him. that out. Yeah, it's apparently it's doing great reviews. The, the Rotten Tomatoes people were real happy. They're like, wow, it's because we get such crap from DC fans about our reviews of their films. So I might be, <laughs> join, I might be joining them again for another one eventually. Nice. So yeah, check that out. Oh, nice. I got a, I got you a headache. shut your mouth, Mike. Oh, <laughs> such a headache. Oh. That was great to see, uh, Mike. I'm so happy for you. And the response has been so Yeah, it's been great. It's been, it's been a so great response. Great. Um, I think that we shot a pilot one with me, so hopefully that will be coming up soon. Nice on, on a particular musical that some of you may know. All right, uh, Mike, cats? what is yours? Yeah, is it cats? Uh, is it cats? Is it? Uh, it's totally cats. I, I, Taylor Swift all the way. No, I'm just joking. Oh. Uh, Vogel, uh, uh, what do we have to tell them before we get into our social media? Oh man, well if uh, <laughs> if you made it if you made it through Kalinowski talking about Batman versus Superman and Roka talking about cats and you're still here, you must like us. <laughs> and so if you like us that much, we'd like your help. Uh, we'd like you to hit the like button below, uh, like this video. We'd also like you to subscribe to Johnny's Outlaw page because not only can you catch more awesome Geek Buddies episodes, but there is a ton of content for you to check out. All of it starring the Outlaw himself uh, with several other amazing uh, hosts, co-hosts, and guests. Um, and then the best thing that you can do for us is actually, if you are listening to this right now on Anchor or Spotify or Apple Podcasts, you can rate us there. You can leave a comment. It helps us go up in the ranking so more people find us. And even beyond that, you can share this video, uh, retweet it, post it on your Facebook, send it to your geeky friends. Hey, this was great. Hanging out with these guys for an hour was awesome. Let's talk geeky stuff. We love it. We love the comments that we see in the YouTube and on our Twitter where people are saying they're coming and finding us and it feels like just sitting around the bar talking to your friends. That's what we are going for. We just want this to be a fun conversation where you can just like hear geeky stuff and leave us comments below. So definitely do all that and uh, then tune in for more awesome content as it comes out. Absolutely. You can follow Mike at MK2, and you can follow me at The Roke of Says. You can follow Shannon at Shannon underscore McClung or Shannon the Geek Buddy on Instagram. And if you want to follow us, we are at, uh, we are on Twitter at Geek underscore Buddies and on Instagram at The underscore Geek underscore Buddies there. Uh, follow us on all the social media. We are all very active on social media. Have fun. And please uh, tweet Kalinowski and tell him how much you enjoyed him being on the show. You know, it's always nice to have you guys tweet our guests uh, and our right. recurring guests, definitely, and tell them how much you enjoy their points of views and uh, uh, feelings about everything we talked about here. Uh, all right, that's it. Thank you all so much. Take care of yourselves. Hope you're enjoying your Christmas season. If I can throw in one plug or two plugs, we do the Mandalorian reviews every Friday here on the channel. Laura Kelly has been great to step in for our boy Shannon and those have been fantastic our last one just crossed 10,000 views just pretty great for this the little channel of mine little channel that could uh, so pretty awesome to see that so keep tuning into those every Friday and if I can plug uh, something else we got here on the on the channel 25 days of Christmas are happening challenged myself to review one Christmas movie every day up until the 25th it is already kicking my ass and it's only the <laughs> second day so uh, and this has been such a challenge I've taken on but I've taken it on so that we can pick up this Christmas spirit here and get people back into feeling good about uh, the world because 2020 has been a bitch of a year for sure so <laughs> hopefully so join us and I'm hopefully I know Michael has already volunteered to be on one on some of them so maybe I could talk Mikey Christmas into coming on a couple hell yeah his thoughts about a Christmas movie that'd be a lot of volunteered people. aka getting pissed that he didn't let me review uh <laughs> uh the, the last one <laughs> for sure for sure that may change we shall see all right well thanks everybody uh we'll talk to you next time on another brand new episode of the geek buddies hey, hey!